13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. In the mid to late 1970s, Gary Marshall was ABC's Wonder Boy and nostalgia was his secret weapon. The 1950s-based Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley carried beleaguered viewers back to a simpler time. As the 70s prepared to turn into the 80s, ABC turned to Marshall to weave his nostalgic magic once again. But instead of the 1960s, he decided to look backward. During World War II, the number of women in the workforce grew by over 50% as women took up jobs to free men for military action. At the same time, the sudden influx of war workers into Washington, D.C. created one of the worst housing shortages in the nation's history up to that point. These two factors would form the framing device for Marshall's next sitcom. Marshall turned to his go-to producers Thomas Miller and Edward Milkis, now partnered with Robert Boyette, who tasked staff writer Leonora Thuna with creating the concept and writing the pilot script. The result was Good Time Girls. The show centered around four women, three Pentagon workers and one reporter covering the housing shortage who finds herself unexpectedly homeless in the middle of her story, sharing an attic apartment in a Washington boarding house in 1942. They were joined by two male rumors who lived on the floor below, who had been kept out of the army for various reasons, and the married couple who owned the rooming house. The big name in the cast was Georgia Engel, who had played Georgette on The Mary Tyler Moore Show as Loretta, and Broadway actors Merwin Goldsmith and Marsha Lewis as the Coolidges, the married couple who ran the boarding house. For the rest of the cast, the producers picked relative unknowns. As the narrator and central character Edith, they picked an actress named Annie Potts. For Boy Crazy Betty, they cast Lorna Patterson. For reporter Camille, they picked former paper chase actress Francine Tacker. Flat-footed Cabby Frankie was played by Adrian Zmed, and comedian Benny was played by Peter Scolari. Tuesday on Happy Day. His name up his knee. The Fonz wants to turn the old Arnolds into the new Fonzies. That's a knife in my back. There's gonna be war between the new partners. Then the good time girls are in for a wild old time. I told you this was gonna happen. When three eager fiancés show up all at once for the same girl. Betty and I are getting married tonight. Even we got engaged, I had no idea it would come to this. It's Dynamite Comedy, Tuesday night starting at 8 on ABC. When I arrived in Washington in 1942, I didn't have a place to live. Then, quite by chance, I met Betty Crandall. She'd come all the way from Iowa to help with the war effort. Our cab driver, Frankie Millardo, became our first new friend in Washington and quite a lifesaver. He brought us to Coolidge House, the place that turned out to be our new home. George and Irma Coolidge were the landlords. And thanks to Loretta Smoot, one of the sweetest of my newfound friends, we were soon sharing her room in the attic. Oh, then there was Camille Rittenhouse. She sweet-talked Mr. Coolidge into letting her stay in the attic, too. Frankie shared the room across the hall with our resident comedian, Benny Lohman. Coolidge House was crowded, but we all became good friends. And although there were hard times, there were plenty of good times, too. We all had a uncle, and his name was Sam. We had to go in and get him out of the jail. It was a time for loving, with no time to waste. A time for action, a time to make haste. The axis would ask us, it had to be faced. Back in the 40s, back in the 40s when every 
Good Time Girls debuted on Tuesday, January 22nd, 1980 at 8.30, right after Happy Days. Storylines included Betty having to juggle the many different GIs she had promised to marry, Frankie trying repeatedly to join the army, and your usual Gary Marshall slapstick. Episodes were peppered with references to World War II home front life like rationing, and in a bit of professional nepotism, Scott Bayo and Michael McKean appeared in guest starring roles. The ratings started okay, but they went downhill from there. People used to the escapism of the simplistic 1950s of Happy Days in Laverne and Shirley were unprepared for the darker overtones of a show set during World War II. In addition with eight major characters, character development in a 25-minute sitcom was a bit lacking. The show proved unable to hold on to Happy Days' lead-in, and ABC pulled it off the schedule once the February sweeps were over. Saturday, guess who's coming to dinner at Angie's? The President of the United States. Is he here yet? Then on the Good Time Girls. Hey, yes. Wedding bells are breaking up the old gang, but the bride gets an unexpected shower. And on the love boat. To you and me. Three's a crowd when an ex-lover joins the honeymoon cruise. Then on Fantasy Island, a shy executive gets a bold new image. My husband! And fights a battle to save his neck. Tonight, starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. Hoping to give the show a second chance, ABC brought it back in April, moving it to Saturday nights at 8.30. The ratings were slightly better, but still not what ABC was expecting. The fate of Good Time Girls was one of the last decisions that ABC made while preparing the 1980-81 fall schedule, and at literally the last minute, they made the call. The show was cancelled. Five remaining episodes were burned off in August. Hello, Ghostbusters. Yes, of course they're serious. The newcomers in the show's cast wound up faring a lot better than the show itself did, however. Annie Potts became famous as the receptionist in the hit comedy Ghostbusters and went on to star in Designing Women. Lorna Patterson played the role that Goldie Hawn made famous in the TV version of Private Benjamin. Adrian Zmed went on to fame in T.J. Hooker. Francine Tacker replaced Morgan Fairchild, uh, for two episodes, in the cast of Dallas. And Peter Scolari was remembered by producers Miller, Milkis, and Boyette when the time came to cast their next project, Bosom Buddies. Not bad for a little show that, despite what the theme song claimed, no one cared about. <laughs> 